स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया वेलकम स्टूडेंट्स टू दिस क्लास इन टूडेज क्लास विल कंटिन्यू आवर डिस्कशन ऑन द पॉस्टुलेट्स एंड प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स सो फार वी हैव डिस्कस्ड थ्री डिफरेंट पॉस्टुलेट्स ऑफ क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स द फर्स्ट पॉस्टुलेट सेड दैट द स्टेट ऑफ ए क्वांटम मैकेनिकल सिस्टम इज कम्प्लीटली स्पेसिफाइड बाय ए क्वांटिटी दैट वी कॉल वेव फंक्शन द वेव फंक्शन हैज ऑल द इन्फॉर्मेशन अबाउट द स्टेट एंड पॉस्टुलेट टू सेड दैट इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेक अपटेन एन idea about any classical observable quantum mechanics provides us with all the uh, post uh, quantum mechanics provides us with with the required operator uh, corresponding to that classical observable uh, this is that postulate one and postulate two and in postulate three said that if we apply this quantum mechanical operator on our state function the only allowed observables that would come out of the experiment are going to be the eigen values of this operator since these eigen values are going to be the outcome of an experiment we we suppose that they would be all real quantities so if eigen values are real corresponding to the this op operator quantum mechanical operator a then we discussed one important consequence that is the operators who have eigen values real would follow uh, a necessary uh, condition those of op those linear operators which ha which follow which have uh, a real eigen values follow a, a condition with, with which we call them as hermitian operator the general definition of this hermitian operator we discussed in our uh, previous uh, lecture is that if i have a if i if i have two well behaved function f and g and the right hand side is f star the complex conjugate of a operator a g another well behaved function if i take do this integration over all the space only hermitian operators would fulfill this equality this is the condition for which we call any linear operator as hermitian operator a in this case is an hermitian operator if a uh, operator a satisfies this this condition for any uh, f and g as as two well behaved functions uh, please note one uh, important thing is that in the left hand side the operator a acts on function g in the right hand side this has turned over operator a is actually acting on function f not on function g of course after, after we have now a function out of this operation and then we can multiply that with another function with and then do the integration but important thing to note is that in the left hand side the operator a acts on function g and the right hand side the operator a acts on the function f this is a condition for hermitian, hermitian operator now we would actually take a few examples and see whether these operators are hermitian operators or not Uh, our first uh, example we know that operator px is given by minus i h bar d by dx this is the uh, the functional form of the operator and we now we'll check whether this is hermitian or not we we'll write down the general uh, formula to check whether the operator is hermitian or not now we would use for a for a, we will define any uh, well behaved function and since the variable is here x so i take x from minus infinite to uh, plus infinite and i evaluate this integral i see this this region is my operator so i see this minus i h bar is is constant so i take it out of my uh, integration now to solve this integral we'll use uh, the uh, the integration by parts rule i am sure uh, you all are aware of uh, this technique from your mathematics courses uh, if i have a function u dv 
uh, and I want to evaluate its integ uh, integral between the limits a and b. Uh, the integration by part says that I can take the product of u v and evaluate the value at these two limits u v, u v at a and b minus v d u. So, in this uh, term here, so I define u as psi star as my as my u and I define psi as s v. So, here if you see then the form, form of this, this expression is at u d v because this is d psi by d x. So, therefore, I can now use this formula over here. I have minus i h bar. I have to evaluate u v, u is psi star, v is psi and I have to do this evaluation at the evaluation at the two limits minus infinite to and plus infinite minus v d u v is psi d u is now d psi star by d x and I have to integrate this. So, this is what I get when I use the integration by part. When I look at the first term here this term you see that I have to do this evaluation of psi star psi at minus infinite and plus infinite what happens to the wave function at minus infinite and plus infinite? If the wave function remains finite as x goes to infinite, then we have a problem. The problem is that this wave function is not well behaved function, it is not square integrable. So, therefore, it will not be an acceptable function. Since we have started the uh, discussion by telling that we are dealing with some well behaved function, so therefore, psi as well as psi star have to become 0 when x goes as goes to minus infinite or plus infinite. So, at limit x minus infinite and limit at x plus infinite this size and size star therefore, size star psi the probability have to become 0. So, for any well behaved function this condition is given. So, if this term is 0 then I am left with the term I have a minus sign here I have a minus sign here to take care. So, I take this i h bar now uh, inside the integration. what I did is that I take plus i h bar into this integration and then write minus i, I h bar with a complex conjugate uh, then that gives me uh, i h bar. And I, when I look at this the right hand side you would see that I have shown the, the, the right hand side of the Hermitian operator condition is, is fulfilled. So, if you compare the left hand side the left hand side here and the right hand side you see that the p x operator is actually a Hermitian operator. We would use the uh, similar argument to show that kinetic energy operator is also a uh, Hermitian operator. Uh, if you remember the kinetic energy operator T or sometimes it is given as k cap uh, is, is the functional form of this operator is to show that it is a Hermitian we start from the condition that psi star minus s square by 2 m where x goes from minus infinite to plus infinite. This will be the right hand side of the, uh, the Hermitian condition and we would show that this operator is, uh, is, is Hermitian. So, the way we did in the previous uh, uh, case for the linear momentum operator we take out the constant of uh, constant from the integration out of the integration and we are left with psi star d square psi divided by d x square d x. Now, again we will use the uh, integration by parts here, but here my u is uh, psi star and v is not psi rather d psi by d x. If I take v as d psi by d x then this form this term becomes u in multiplied by d v because one more differentiation of this function v gives me d square psi by d x square. So, since I have already defined u 1 v I will I will take uh, I will do the evaluation uh, of this of this term. Uh, 
uh, I would evaluate this term here. So, I have minus a square by 2 m first the part is u v. So, psi star v is d psi by d x and I have to evaluate these two terms the product of these two terms at the limits minus infinite and plus infinite minus I v d u. So, v is d psi by d x and d u is d psi star by d x. Again when I look at this the first term psi star d psi by d x I have to evaluate these two terms at minus infinite and plus infinite. I use the same argument that the wave function if it is an acceptable or say if it is a well behaved wave function then it must vanish at minus infinite and plus infinite and also its first derivative should also become 0 at minus infinite and plus infinite. So, therefore, this term is again 0 and I am left with this minus and minus sign becomes plus sign a square by 2 m Now, this is still not the uh, final form of the expression that we would require to show uh, kinetic energy operator is, is, is summation, but I would actually leave this derivation right here with, with, a, uh, with a request for you to continue this uh, derivation to show the uh, right hand side uh, of, the, of the Hermitian relation. Everything that you need to do this derivation we already have discussed. So, therefore, it must not it, 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 it would not be difficult for you to continue this derivation and at the end you should be able to show that kinetic energy operator is also a Hermitian operator. Uh, next what we would do is that we would discuss some uh, important properties of Hermitian operators. Uh, to do that let us consider that uh, I have an operator A which I am calling it an uh, a, a, let us suppose it is a Hermitian operator and suppose psi m is an Eigen function of this operator with an Eigen value given by as a m. So, since i m is an Eigen function of operator A with an Eigen value of a m I can write down this Eigen value equation and similarly psi n is another Eigen function of operator a with an Eigen value of a n. If we have to if we I want to write psi m star a psi n d tau since operator a is Hermitian. So, this is over uh, all uh, space minus it can go to from minus infinite to plus infinite I would uh, leave this uh, limit. So, if I have to write since A is a Hermitian operator I can write down this I know because this is the uh, definition of any linear operator to, to be called as, uh, as a Hermitian operator, but psi n is a is an Eigen function of A. So, what we would do is that we use this when operator A acts on this Eigen function psi n I know it gives me a n psi n and in the right hand side when I see operator A acts on psi m I get A m psi m I simplify both left hand and right hand side since A n and A m are Eigen values. So, which are constant. So, therefore, I am bringing them out of my integration. And if you see I can take this right hand side to the uh, left hand side and make them equal to 0. I have this uh, expression now in my hand. So, I see there are two terms multiplication of two terms and that multiplication is 0. I consider case 1 where m is equal to n. When m is equal to n, so a m 
therefore becomes essentially a n. So, here also psi n star becomes a psi n star and psi n uh, remains psi m, but we already have seen this, this term. What is it? This suggests that as if we are trying to normalize, so this uh, both indices are n. So, is if, uh, if we as if th this is actually the normalization condition. So, this value must be finite because if wave function is, is a well behaved function, then I must be able to normalize it, it should be square integrable and the, the value of this uh, in, uh, integration should be uh, finite. So, since this is this is finite, so then therefore, this quantity has to become uh, 0. So, that suggests a n is a n star and this is possible when a n is real. This is actually not surprising because we have already seen that we derived the condition for Hermitian operator by the fact that eigenvalues are real, but this also tells us that if the oper uh, if we have an Hermitian operator, the eigenvalues of the Hermitian operators are all real. Then we continue our discussion for the case when m is not equal to n. So, when is when m is not equal to n, so therefore, a n is not equal to a m star. So, this term cannot be 0. So, therefore, the second term is 0. Of course, we are here we are assuming that the eigenvalues a n and a m are necessarily uh, non degenerate or they are not equal, but then there are cases where the degeneracies are there. We would, we would not go into that discussion. For, for our discussion, it is sufficient to see that if m is not equal to n, therefore, a n and a m are two different eigenvalues. So, this quantity is, is not 0. So, therefore, the right the second term must be 0. So, if m is not equal to n, so I see psi m star should be 0. So, this condition when I see the overlap of this is actually called an overlap integral. So, overlap of two different functions psi n and psi m star. So, this the overlap is, is 0. When this condition is satisfied, we say psi m and psi n are orthogonal. So, we see that the Eigen functions of any Hermitian operator are orthogonal. We see we already saw that the Eigen values of Hermitian operator are real. Now, we see that Eigen functions of Hermitian operator are orthogonal, but we also know that we can we already have normalized this wave functions psi n and psi m. So, the psi m and psi m are already uh, normalized because we know that if we have a well behaved function, we can always normalize them. So, these two conditions together that when the wave functions are orthogonal and they are individually normalized, when these two conditions are met, then the psi m and the psi n or these, these wave function are called orthonormal. This orthonormal is, is, a, is a new phrase which tells that two function uh, if, if two functions are called orthonormal, that means uh, they are uh, that, that they are individually normalized and their overlap uh, integral is, is 0. We will make uh, some generic uh, statements to, to that effect. We would see, we would say that we have psi m star is, is 1 when m is equal to n and this is 0 when m is not equal to n. When m is not equal to n, then they are orthogonal when m, in m is equal to n, they are essentially normalized. So, together they are called ortho, ortho, orthonormal. So, this expression in even in a, sh in a shorthand, this is also given as a Kronecker delta, it is a delta function delta m n. So, delta uh, is a here is a Kronecker delta. So, delta m n is 1 when m is equal to n and this is 0 when m is not equal to n. So, uh, so in the in this present discussion, we saw that 
there are two important properties of Hermitian operator. First, the eigenvalues of this Hermitian operator are all real. The second, the eigenfunctions of a Hermitian operator are orthonormal. You know, when I say orthonormal, they I mean they are the orthogonal to each other and they are individually uh, normalized. So, these are two important uh, properties of Hermitian operator. After discussing these two important properties of Hermitian operator, we will now look at yet another property of Hermitian operator. Uh, the, the eigenfunctions of this Hermitian operator, which we saw that they form uh, they are orthonormal. Now, there is another important property is that the eigenfunctions of Hermitian operator form a, a complete set. The eigenfunctions of Hermitian operator form a complete set. So, there already we know that uh, orthonormal. So, the eigenfunctions of Hermitian operator form a complete set of orthonormal functions. Now, we will spend some time in discussing what do we mean by a complete set. If you remember, we saw that when we are deriving the eigenfunctions of linear momentum operator or angular momentum operator, we actually were getting a series of eigenfunctions and a series of eigenvalues. In often times you would see uh, in most of, uh, other cases when you did obtain an eigenfunction, you get many many eigenfunctions. In fact, so if the operator is Hermitian, the you are so you are going to get a complete set of uh, orthonormal uh, eigenfunctions. When I say a complete set of orthonormal eigenfunctions, suppose I have an operator A whose which is Hermitian and I have eigenfunctions as f 1, f 2, f 3 so on so forth. Correspondingly, I have eigenvalues as a 1, a 2, a 3 and so on so forth. So, where uh, I am satisfying a f n is a n f n. If operator a is Hermitian, then all these f 1, f 2, f 3 and so on so forth are in shorthand I say uh, set of f i's. These eigenfunctions they form a complete set. When I say complete set, I mean that using these eigenfunctions f i, I can express any other arbitrary function. So, psi is any other arbitrary uh, function, which follows or which obeys all the limiting uh, boundary conditions that this uh, eigenfunctions of this operator follow. Any arbitrary function can be expressed as a linear combination of this eigenfunction, this complete set of eigenfunctions. So, where f i's are my eigenfunctions, they form a complete set, I, they would form a complete set if I can show any arbitrary function psi as a linear combination of this eigenf eigenfunctions f i, where this c i are the coefficients that I have to determine uh, for a given arbitrary function. So, that means, if I take psi, psi as one arbitrary function, I would be able to express psi in terms of this f i s. If I take yet another function, suppose let us say psi 1, I also and it follows the uh, this arbitrary function also follows the boundary conditions that f the wave eigenfunctions of operator a follow. In that case even psi 1 can also be expressed in terms of f i's. If I take another arbitrary function psi 2 that also can be expressed in terms of this complete set of functions f i. How would uh, psi 1, psi 2, psi 3's definition be different. So, there they will be different in terms of these coefficients. So, when I express psi i, I would have a particular set of coefficients of f i uh, and when I have psi 1, I would have a different set of co uh, coefficients for, uh, for corresponding to eigenfunction f i. But in principle, I can define any arbitrary function psi as a linear combination of this complete set uh, eigenfunctions of Hermitian operator. The important question therefore lies is that what is the value of psi, c i, the, the coefficient. And in today's class, uh, just to remind you, we discussed some important properties of Hermitian operator, which we also showed that uh, how different quantum mechanical operators are Hermitian, and we saw that the 
important properties of Hermitian operator are that the Hermitian operators have real eigenvalues and their eigenfunctions form a complete set of orthonormal uh, set. Uh, in our future classes, we will continue our discussion. Thank you very much.